Hi, Zainal. Hi, Ari. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm good afternoon. I'm fine, Zainal. Yeah, yeah, I got your profile from HR. So, say, okay. you're looking for a job change, right? You know, you know that. Yeah. Uh, sir conveyed you the uh, our requirement we are seeking for the candidate who can work on aws services on l2 level all right okay yeah uh, i got your profile already anyway still you just to tell me uh, about yourself and uh, uh, services which are the services you have exposure what is your background experience everything based on that okay, we'll, okay? yes ma'am yes yeah uh, yeah i am uh, zainul abidin i am having around 15 plus experience presently working for a hybrid cloud technology in our DXA, DXC uh, company. And my day-to-day -day responsibility, like a, a SOPS admin, uh, as well as I'm doing project work also. The, I'm having a most experience in the IIS related infrastructure as a service, like a creating a instance, uh, um, managing the instance, disk extending, creating uh, disks, uh, and apart from the taking a snapshot and restoring the virtual machine. Apart from that, I'm having experience in the IAM, identity and access management, like creating the users and applying the policies, customized policies also as per the customer requirement as per the, uh, the design given by the architect, senior architect. And then also I'm having experience in VPC also creating a, a virtual networks and the peering, subnetting, and the road 53 configuration. Okay, and then network ACL also I'm having experience and then security also like um, if uh, according to the customer requirement and then design we can uh, implementing that. Uh, and as well as having experience on route 53 also like uh, creating the um, creating the zones and configuring the zones and uh, failure policy also. Apart from that, like experience in cloud front, cloud trail, this uh, IS rated all the services I am having experience on that. Yeah, thank you. That's really good, Sainal. Uh, you know, that gives me more clarity that uh, the area whichever you are uh, worked on. Okay, fine. I'll start from some basic question. Okay, based on your yeah. input, right? I'll I'll increase the you know uh, strength of the questions. Okay. Sure. So you you said like you have exposure with VPC, AC to everywhere. So the you you yeah. are aware. Uh, what is the difference between security group and ACL? And what scenario you will prefer to go with security group and what scenario you will prefer to go with ACL? Okay. Security group, we will, uh, the security group and uh, ACL, the security is we configure on a instance level. Okay. And then security groups, we have two policies like inbound and outbound. Okay. We can, according to that um, rules, we can apply the policy in the ACL, ACL, we have the policy like uh, we can configure it to inbound also as well as outbound also, and we can configure on a subnet level. Okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. All right. That's good. That's good, really. So, since you said, right, uh, you worked on IAM and all in AWS. So, yeah. what scenario you have created a customized IAM policy? Yeah, of course, we know AWS providing uh, default uh, IAM policies. Almost all the policies are, should be there. In some cases, yeah. We need to create our own customized policy, right? In what scenario you created a customized policy? Yeah, suppose uh, some uh, users, we need to give the particular only one uh, service. We need to give the access for the particular one, only one service. In that also, we need to filter is like you only give the read, like uh, you only create the EC to instance. You cannot delete it. Or like this only, we will give the policy. Also, some scenarios, like uh, users need to access to the particular region only not all the regions that is also that case also will go to the customized policy perfect perfect answer thank you Sainal. so uh, since you are telling this are the scenario you created a customized policy uh, what is your understanding aws providing multiple way to generate a customized iam policy which are the tools yeah. which are the interface you familiarized with uh, among them uh, like a, there's a uh, there's a one uh, website also is there you there we can go to the we can create the customized policy also or we can the JSON we can also create a policy in our own policy we can con customize it according to our requirement. All right, that's good. Yeah, fine. So these are areas you are generating a policy. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. So could you tell me about your IAM structure like um, uh, how your initial time of period your IAM 
or uh, authentication structure has been defined who has most higher privilege who has lesser privilege at your current project how you are managing your iam uh iam will create as per the uh, groups like uh, we'll create the groups like um, l1 group and l2 group as well as architect group also l3 group also if su suppose somebody having a storage uh, they will do only storage related work we'll configure we create a storage group according to that we will create a customized policy will what access is required to that groups we will we will add to that user to that particular group according to that they will get the access like l1 having the only just view access like uh, all the ec2 instance they can view it uh, cloud trail they can go and they can check the what is that event is generated uh, according to that uh, particular job roles and responsibility we are giving the uh, we are created the group and we will add to that user to the that particular group suppose the developer having a we have creating the they will give the cli access also uh, we will we will create that group also for that okay so what do you mean by mfa in i MFA, MFA is a multi-factor authentication. Uh, suppose we want to go with a two-factor authentication. Suppose uh, after logging to the users, uh, we need to give that, uh, they need to go to the mobile, they need to uh, approve that uh, multi-factor authentication or they need to give the key or uh, this uh, numbers, then then that there is a two-way authentication. So suppose if some uh, first user authentication is get compromised, maybe that uh, secondary this multi-factor authentication should not be get compromised with that. So that is when we will go with the multi-factor authentication. All right, that's good. Yeah, so you are good in IAM. So let me ask you some questions on S3. So in S3, okay. we well known, all of us, uh, S3 providing two uh, way of creating bucket. One is in public, another one is private. So can you tell me what is the difference between private bucket and public bucket and which one is more secure and which is recommended by AWS? Uh, public bucket means the, uh, we can access through the URL. Okay. And suppose if somebody want to access from the outside of the internet within, not in the, uh, within the cloud or they want to access from the outside. So in that case, we'll go with a public bucket. Internal bucket, they will can access with the only within that uh, Amazon EC2 instance, whichever the instances they are there within, like a, within the on premises in the, if you tell in the, the real environment, but in the cloud, we'll tell us within the AWS, they can access it. But uh, in that case, we will go to the endpoints. Um, within the endpoint, they can access to that, uh, without internet, they can access to that um, uh, private, uh, private S3 buckets. The most secure is the private bucket only. Okay, that's really good, actually. Yeah. So, Sainal, so just imagine. I'll tell you one scenario. Okay, I'm having I'm having one client. Okay, the client they are more and more, you know, uh, focus on uh, storing their data in Amazon S3. Okay. okay. You are a cloud architect, and now you are going to suggest them which is the most cost-effective way. They are they are simply they don't have any idea. They are planning to upload all the all their data on-premises data into S3. So as a cloud architect, uh, you have to be in the position to suggest them the basic and cheap um, uh, casting experience. So what okay, just, area you can suggest? Yeah, first, first uh, after the first, just I wanted to understand the requirement. How frequently they are accessing the data? How how after the how many days they are uh, they are going to with archive? And according to that scenario, we can go with the they having the lifecycle policies in the S3. So the very cheaper is the glacier. Uh, we, it will go with uh, after 13, 30 days, they are not accessing in that case that will go to the um, glacier. So that is a very cheap, cheap way. So we can tell that. Excellent. It, okay. Even that is a we having a, a retention period also with one year or three years or 10 years still, I think five years we can, we can keep the data. According to that is a customized, we can configure it. Okay, fine, fine. So in what case, you will recommend to go with your customer using Elastic IP. Elastic IP, suppose they having a one website, they want to access the website, they want to configure a particular uh, URL. In that case, we can go with the Elastic IP address. Or we, in the load balancer case also, we can configure the Elastic IP address so that IP address should not get changed, uh, whichever the sub binding with that particular website. Okay, fine. So, can you tell me the difference between snapshot and AMI? Yeah, with uh, AMI Amazon uh, um, machine image, with Amazon machine image, we can create a multiple instance. Uh, 
but the snapshot particular the only snapshot with the snapshot we can restore that particular disk uh, but the me we can create the entire virtual entire instance with the same instance we can copy it like a like a duplicate copying this virtual machine okay fine so sinal i'll tell you one more scenario okay i have a customer they are having almost you know 20 to 30 different aws account i'm not talking about iam user i'm talking about the individual aws account out of 30 okay. accounts then 10 of accounts are they are using for production 10 account they are using for sandbox 10 account they are using for uat uh, they okay. are in a confusion uh, how they are going to centrally manage all those accounts and how they are going to restrict them uh, using some standardization policies. Do you have any okay. solution for them and how you will implement in the position of cloud architect? Suggest them yeah. how can we optimize this 30 dedicated AWS account to uh, bring it into a centralized environment? Can you tell me? A to yeah. Yeah, the AWS giving a feature called AWS organization unit. To to that organization unit concept, we can achieve this one. We'll whatever the home uh, we'll make one is a root account, like a master account. Remaining we'll uh, we'll create the organization unit in that uh, uh, AWS organization unit in the console. Uh, according to that, uh, whatever this we should we'll create the organization unit according to the their roles and responsibility, and then we will we'll move that account to that org OU and we'll customize the policy in that OU. Okay, so say for an example, uh, I'm owning one AWS account. Okay, you are created a master account. I added my account under your master. So okay. now, right, there is a problem. Uh, what there is a loop back, right? If I feel any time from my account, I can click on leave organization button. So anytime I can get out from the organization, right? So what way yeah. you want to secure it? Uh, there is a, one option is there uh, there we can we can configure it just uh, we can create one sorry we can create one policy we can attach policy to that uh, account uh, organization unit so that uh, any other person uh, other account can should not be uh, get uh, exist from the uh, my account okay fine that's good really so what what is the best way you can suggest when there is a 20 30 aws accounts are there how we can uh, manage the billing how we can optimize the bill is there any way centralized place where you can see yeah creating organization we can manage the bills so we can master account should having the will get the bill for remaining account they can use uh, according to their requirement okay fine so in your organization how are you managing the logs in your current project uh aws log aws events uh and the cloud trail we will manage it too. we'll check that uh, wow, okay. which are the things cloud trail okay all right all right fine 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 even uh, we will having the uh what is that third party tool also mm -hmm. um flex the what is that uh, i forget the name through that only we have windows log will um, manage with uh, flexra uh -huh. Flexra software, mm -hmm. and then uh, one more tool is there to uh, the service logs also generating. Yeah, I forgot the name. Yeah. Okay, fine. No, it's not an issue. So, can you tell me, like, um, I have a, a two AWS account. One is production account, another one is sandbox account. Okay. Uh, okay. My client asked me to do a POC. Yeah, even you can take you as an example. You are a person who are, you are the architect. You do, you did a POC on the sandbox account. Okay. So the application working as expected. Now my client want to migrate this EC2 instance from my sandbox AWS account to production AWS account. What are the easiest yeah. way you can suggest? Yeah, we'll create the AMI and from the AMI we will uh, we can move to the different account, uh, different AWS account or different region also. Very good, very good. That's perfect. Correct answer. Yeah, all right. So coming back to the you know uh, networking, can you tell me your yeah. end-to-end -end infrastructure and uh, network perspective and uh, overall network architecture? Uh, let's see how you are understood yeah. the, uh, each and every. Yeah, uh, we have around three environment like a production, development, and testing. Uh, we have three VPC according to that uh, production development. In that we created the subnet. Okay, we have multiple subnet in that uh, production environment as well as the development and then uh, uh, in the switch uh, development environment we created a separate but the production and testing environment we have a pairing so that uh, sometime the users want to access any data any resource from the um, production to test we created the pairing to that uh, two account and this is this is what we configure the vpc okay. and then we having the security group and acl also we implemented we according to that requirement 
uh, we customize our requirement and then we filter the some uh, some subnets in the acl also as well as in the security group also oh okay fine so can you tell me like uh, in my client environment right i have almost you know uh, my client are using three region one is us region us west frankfurt region mumbai region so they are very okay. much frustrated in uh, making a peering connection if any issues comes also it's very difficult for me to troubleshoot it uh, to optimize yeah. all the peering connection you, you you would suggest any alternate way which may yeah, uh, now aws yeah aws giving a good features so like a transist gateway using the transist gateway we can achieve this there is a very easy way also there is not that much like a cid overlapping that and all we won't get any issues so this is a good uh aws providing this uh, services the, the transit gateway we can do it okay that's perfect yeah so uh, coming to the load balancing concept coming to auto scaling concepts and all how you yeah. implemented those features in your project are you using it in your environment yeah we are using the application load balancer okay we have uh, created the uh, load balancer with application group and we are implemented it okay, okay. so you know, Uh, have you ever uh, experienced in uh, auto scaling yeah auto scaling also we are attached both the, both the, even load balancer as well as auto scale auto scaling group both the both the things we are using like a uh, auto scaling we will automate the uh, like a low, there is a any um, we hang the horizontal and vertical auto scaling will be there if any server is going down then automatically there will be uh, insert will be get launched to the auto scaling a load balancer just will you load the balancer like uh, they want to go, go to that particular url suppose user is accessing the url they want to go to the other uh, having multiple instances according to their where customize the target group also according to their the, the requirement the uh, request will go to the particular instance but but we are using a both uh, load balancer as well as a uh, uh, auto scaling Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, and Sainul, uh, there is one more scenario. I'll tell you. Try to understand. My client has very critical okay. application. Uh, like they are, you know, uh, their production environment. This is that business running application. Very very important. They want uh, uh, you to uh, set up some alert when it is reaches eighty uh, percentage of utilization. Right. You need to trigger yeah. the alert to the respective, you know, L one team or L two team someone. so what yeah. what is the easiest approach a cost effective approach you can suggest in order to implement this yeah one thing is that we can configure the cloud trail cloud trail also will get the logs and we will get the event through the sns also we can create the sns topics and then if any thing is going for that 80 um, above 80% is utilizing this instance that will get the alert through the inst- uh, uh, sns sns okay simple notification service will get it okay okay perfect that's that's good actually so coming to encryption okay what type of encryption you are using in your environment what are the resources you use to encrypt in your uh, account uh, encryption like a uh, we particular with some critical production servers are there for that their disk we are encrypting mm-hmm. uh, this domain and then uh, in the storage also we are the particular buckets also we are doing the encryption Mm-hmm. there is a we can get the two type encryption like a aws as a providing the default encryption mm-hmm. even we can we can create our own encryption key also okay but Which we are mean? using the aws aws one okay. manage aws manage encryption algorithm all right all right that's even good no issues fine i know so by the way i came to know you have a very good exposure with iam uh, s3 ec2 vpcs load balancer yeah. auto scaling and uh, organization service even you have idea that's really good actually mm-hmm. So thank you Sainal um good talk thanks, to thanks. you I'll, I'll thanks yeah thanks back to HR okay thank you Sainal sure, sure sure appreciate for your time yeah. thank you no, thank okay. you very much nice talking to you bye